once again for coming into the presence of the Lord. Today, I wanted to talk about something very interesting. I don't know how I should talk, uh, how I should title it, but I wanted to talk about something that has caused a lot of, um, it's a cancerous disease in church, in society, almost every facet of our life. I wanted to <clears throat> see polygamy and divorce. Many Christians today are living in polygamy. Many Christians today are living in divorce. We want to see how did it come about? So we are going to trace it from Genesis, from when God created man and when the Lord Jesus Christ came and how did it change in between for man to have hmm, many wives and man to have a freedom to divorce at will. This is man as in biological man, now not man as in man and woman. Men as men to just say, uh, I no longer want my wife, you sign a letter of divorce. How did this come about? So we're going to explore using scriptures because it's very important. You will see this coach almost everywhere, especially in church. So polygamy, we know that when the Lord uh, created Adam and Eve in Genesis 131, he said everything was okay. So what happened then? Where did it change? How did this change come about? So soon after the fall, man realized that he was deep into sin. He realized that he was deep into sin. So the tendencies of man were no longer towards innocent, but were prone to evil. The moment they disobeyed God in that garden, we know one thing for sure, if God had made a chain on top of the if, we know Adam loved his wife so much. I don't think he would have paid any particular attention. So how did this come about? We want to see how it relates to us, how it was then, and why did the Lord used to say, as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of um, a lot, so lot, those two communities were prone to sexual immorality. It comes, it always comes in marriage or no marriage. I will touch briefly also about the angels that left their estate to come and meet with men. I will briefly touch on it. For some people, they think it's something else. But according to the scriptures, I think I can prove well beyond doubt that it was angels that truly came and transgressed their estate to come and meet with the sons of men and the, men, the daughters of men, and they made big, big giants like this. So Adam's delight with Eve was beyond question. He knew that. Like I said, if God had, let's say, created another woman, I don't think this man had an eye for another woman. I don't think he would have cared when this one was just to, you say, no, no, I don't forget about it. So he really, he really loved his pride. But like I preached one time, the minister of the church, this is the symbolic, this was um, the symbol of Christ and the church. If one of us is to be, um, I, I don't know, I'm forgetting the English word. Um, if one of us is to go out to be, I don't know, impure, I don't know how to call it, when one decides to be in faith, I don't know how do you put it now. Hmm. My German has killed my English. If, if it doesn't decide to be faithful, I'll try to find the correct English word. If it doesn't to be, to be unfaithful, it is us as the bride. Christ himself was always faithful. And we saw that God brought, that was the typical family now. Then God gave them blessed them with children. But we saw the eldest son now came. 
we saw how sin, the first sin, Adam committed only one recorded sin. And that was the sin they gave all the dominion to the devil. So the devil became the god of this world, of the world systems. Everything that's running under here, the earth is the lost in the fullness thereof. You cannot have a direct claim on anything. Remember the same devil, you showed the Lord Jesus Christ all the kingdoms of the earth and said, I can give it to you. He was not foolish. Now you came, you come to my kingdom. He said, no, you are not the one who created the world. I did. So what happened? It was alarming that the first human death was so, it was from between brothers. If Cain's jealous could not be satisfied by murder, what could appease his last now? Rape or perhaps mm, a new kind of <clears throat> a new kind of marriage. Let, let's call it polygamy. Polygamy. So <clears throat> this is common lust of a natural man. That's what man is generally. Adam's disobedience was transmitted to all his children. Even if we try to move with, the, with an outward appearance that can fool people. That's why you see servants of God are falling into hell. Every hour they are going in there. Why? Because of these sins that you can cover them here. But Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 said, mm -mm, not so fast. <clears throat> because he said, Jeremiah, the prophet revealed the common trait of man. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? At times, we don't even know our own hearts. So God's command is about his absolute will. So what happened when God um, made man and made the woman, he put them into the garden. Uh, Eve was made in the garden. Um, Adam was made outside the garden. When he came into the garden, that was the perfect will of God. That was the perfect will, his absolute will. So the murder of Adam's youngest son seriously defied God's absolute will. Remember when they sinned, they were chased out of the garden again. So they went out there. That's why they say the woman was in from the garden, not outside the garden. So that murder of Adam's youngest son seriously impaired God's will. Because God's will was always uh, written in us. It's, it's like a DNA. You know what is right, you know what is wrong. Before even anybody tells you what you did is wrong. So we saw Cain would have instantly been consumed for his sin. For our God is a consuming fire. But God at times he refrains from giving immediate justice. Judgment said, oh, okay. Let me leave you so that at times people can have time to repent. So this is um, an important aspect of man's life. So should God at any time now choose to judge the wickedness of man, he will destroy the sinner. He would have destroyed Cain. But I think if he had done it, there were going to be only two men on the face of the earth, Adam and Cain and the two daughters. They had Adam and Eve had five children before Seth was born. So we allowed the sinner to live. Why? This is God's permissive will. At times he permits a sinner to live even 120 years. He allows them. We remember the Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane. When he says something, thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father that he can send 72,000 angels? One legion, uh, they say consists of almost 6,000, I think 6,000 or so. So should God choose judgment rather than mercy? So we see that God chose mercy over judgment. But the problem is God's existence our existence now is always to the mercy of God. 
We cannot exist without the mercy of God because we are a sinner. Remember first Timothy chapter two, verse 15. He said it was a mystery. The angels also, oh, these people, they don't even know that God is working amongst them. They we did not know that God, so it was a mystery. But God, he humbled himself to become like a common man. So God's merciful permission to man is to permit us to live. At times, we choose the way that we want. That's why he said, I'll give man 70 years. The three score and 10 years, which is one score is 20, three score is 60 plus 10, 70 years. So we do not die immediately for our sins. We will eventually die according to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. That's where the devil will be waiting and say, now you come. Even if, even if you live 115 years, the devil will be waiting. He's patient. He's patient. Therefore, Cain was permitted to exist after committing a violent. It was a violent murder. When God said, what have you done to your brother? Say, am I my brother still? Just imagine, for like example, you went to the school of Uncle King. So what happened? Now, I want to show you something before I proceed. I, I'm going to marry, I, I want to show you how it came about this polygamy and how this divorce, why the Lord said it was not so from the beginning and why, have, why has the church tolerated it? An average man in Europe, 60 to 70% are in second marriages. If not, they've been, if not they, are, they are cohabitating, they're living as husband and wife. It's generally true. So here we see something here. The nature of man also understands justice, that if you do something, you must be paid. What people say, come on. What goes around, comes around. So what did Cain do? Cain had to ask God. He knew this, and he said, God, if somebody will find me, they will, they will kill me. So God also knew the vengeance of man and forbid man to judge Cain. You see where, that's why King David said, I would rather fall in the hands of the living God. Why? Because God is merciful. If you fall into the hands of man, you will ever regret ever being born. We can see Cain say, God, if somebody finds me, they are going to kill me. He said, I will put a mark. That is the mark. Also, the devil comes in and you want to put a mark. Now we are sealed by the Holy Spirit, the one who has sealed us for the day of redemption. So God's permissive will is this voluntary act of grace. That is the grace that we are playing around with. That is the grace. So any man that will kill Cain, God say you get seven times the punishment. We see this Cain, he built a city which he named after his son. This was a cursed man, but he went on to build a city. But that's not what we want to talk about. So at times when God permits a man to live, at times our sin, we tend to regulate our sin that it does not consume us like a like a marked cane. So that's where I want to show you something now. That's where this capital punishment came about, but it did not come about in, because Cain would have been killed immediately. But you will see it along the way. I do not want to dwell more on it. I want to dwell more on the, um, how do you say, polygamy and divorce. So, <clears throat> uh, I'm trying to find, so man's existence, you said, is directly proportional to the grace of God. That's what God has given. Because man, uh, let me say, um, when man is given this free will, we see that his acts of pleasure and, and war are even hazardous. We saw it with um, Stalin, we saw it with Hitler, we saw it with Mussolini, we saw it with Idi Amin, we saw it with dictators. We have seen this ravaging disease. Syphilis, gonorrhea, and all this, this, they are coming from men. The atomic bomb, Everything is men. So pollution and death is caused by man's existence. So before Christ now, God permitted Cain to exist by controlling their sin and he marked it. That was before the Lord came. Not that he was not there, he was there, but because it was not yet the time, 
So rather than destroying all sinners and recreating a new earth, God chose to bruise his son where the Lord went to the cross. Isaiah 53. So he permitted the sins of man to destroy his son on a bloody cross so that man can be born again. But not born again that we are going to live the way that we want. So during this period of history between the fall of man and the cross, God regulated sin. He regulated sin or this pollution now. So by permitting man to live, he permitted the pollution to exist also. God initially controlled sin by ordaining man that man will be regulated by his conscience. So, oh, did I do right? But we will see that conscience of man now. Conscience was designed to control sin. Sin that God hated. So conscience is supposed to be the most treasured asset of man because that's the inner being, but it became the weakest of all control. It almost led to the destruction of humankind. We know man were disobedient. When the once long suffering arm of God waited in the days of Noah, Noah took almost 110 to build the ark. Seven years when you were waiting with his grandfather and he died. So it took about 120 years for Noah and God was patient during that time. So while he was preparing the ark, that only eight souls would be saved. So man, this conscience now led us to this flat judgment. So God permitted man to have in man now. So it is. So we are we are coming into into our, into the theme of our topic: this polygamy and divorce. These are things that are not quite explained in church. I, I choose to bring some of these things so that we can ask questions, go back to the Bible, prove it with the Bible scriptures. It's a little bit of theology, yes, but we will get a little bit deeper because we have got the Bible verses that support the thesis or support the notions we are bringing forward. So God, like we said, the human, that is what gave birth to the human government, the one that says, ah, the government, the government, that is there. So it offered the man the right to control his own sin. It offered, it was a twofold. It will also prove to man that he could not govern his sin out of life. So rather than using the government to humble sin, in, the government has inflamed now men. Let's say um, the US, is it 2010 or 2011, where President Barack Obama just said, yeah, now same sex. So we can see the government facilitating the sin of man instead of trying to regulate it. It was further moved forward. So man believed that he could rule. Remember the Tower of Babel with the tower toward the heaven. He said, oh, I'm going to go up there. Let me build it. So he wanted to rule the universe. That is the nature of man. That's why God pronounced the sentence of death and hoped that the human government will provide man eternal salvation. That's what they thought that is going to provide eternal salvation. But man cannot do it. It's only the government of God. We see the violence now with which, with which man does his things. Genesis chapter 6, verse 1. We are not going to read it. So, like we said, the heart of man is desperately weak. So the human laws have become um, are aiding, are helping men to commit more sin. Even though we struggle to contain, to hide our sins. Now that you are putting on a jacket, you are putting on a tie, yeah. you know, you look, you are putting on a suit, you look normal from outside, but you are ravaged by sin. Sin is vandalized too. So under the human government, rather than clubbing his brother, man hid this evil sin, evil nature, under his tongue now. Now they use the tongue. That's why the Lord said, whoever so called his brother Raka, in danger of the cancer, or you kill thou fool. They're in danger of hellfire. Why did the Lord say that? Rather than sleeping with the Bathsheba, we saw what King David did. The man chose to imagine his way into a bed. That's what he did. He said, who is this woman? Said Bathsheba. Who is she married to? 
The man is busy fighting, defending the country. That's where the act of confidence was. This is wickedness. What happened? The man said, go and call and say, the king wants you. Which woman will refuse when the president is calling you? He rushed. And what happened? Sin leads one thing into the other. He committed his sin. He called Bathsheba from the battlefront, said, can you go and sleep with your wife? Say, ah, since when does the president order me to come and sleep with my wife? I mean, the people are not going to do it. I'm here to defend the act of confidence. We know what happened. He sent him to die. So we can see that last. That's why the Lord said, whosoever looketh on a woman to last after her has committed adultery already in the heart. So the garments of man are filthy rags. Isaiah 64 verse, 64 verse 6. So men invented ways to avoid the actual outward, outward act of sin. So he covered sin with sin. We saw it with King David. His heart will not repent. If you call King David, he repented, yes. So the garments of sin were so, are so invisible to man. But men believe that they could since we cannot see real sin. So you see, you see here why man is choosing those four letter words. Paul Raka, the ones that are printable that people in the America use. So now, rather than he hate his life, he's, to hate his wife now, what is he doing? He's deploying a new, a new weapon, divorce. We're going to start into our topic now. That's where we're going to marry, divorce, and polygamy. That's where, that's where man said, okay, Instead, you said, do not hate your brother. Say, I will not hate you. I will let him go. So man's nature was very particularly violent on the domestic front. Man, where man would kill wife for suspecting of having been in a relationship. Just imagine there are children, everybody's playing around. A wife has washed their clothes. She's hanging the clothes on the lining. I saw you talking to this man. You said, ah, greet you. Mama, so and so, I saw you talk, talking to that man. Just imagine in broad daylight, she would be she would be killed for that. So, that is the nature of man. That was the violent part of it. It was very very violent. That's why the Lord explained God's reasoning. He said Moses, because of the hardness of your heart, suffered you or permitted you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. So, divorce is not an invention of heaven. It is manufactured garments of sin. It is of the earth. That is a story covering the sin of man. Like I said, um, divorce is legalized adultery. It allows you to move on and look for the next victim, which what God said, I hate divorce. So another garment of sin was polygamy now. I said, like I said, I was trying to lay a foundation where we are coming from and where we are now we are getting we are getting into the meat of it. So rather than commit adultery, a man divorced his wife and married this and married another. Rather than raping a young a young beautiful woman and made it all, oh, I'll take you as a second wife. She'll come. That's when he took man at polygamy. Now he started. But I'll show you where in the Bible where it started from, using extra biblical sources, which I know is true. So God permitted man to invent divorce and the polygamy. He did not allow it. He just let you do whatever you want because you chose to be God by yourself. So he permitted them to exist as he permitted the sinful man to exist. This is as far as it goes. Otherwise, God did not sanction it. So we are going to discuss why God chose to permit this sinful act to exist in Moses' law. Why did Moses say, God, my, it's not, my, my distress is up to here, over the head. I have had enough of these people. Ah, Moses, I want to divorce my wife. Ah, Moses, I want to do this. So creation marriage is the doctrine of God, God throughout the ages. Throughout the ages. Time and circumstance has no influence on the content and application. And the marriage is universal. Is universal. From the beginning, it was not so. If you marry as a Muslim, when you become a Christian, you are not going to divorce. 
it's going to be recognized because it's universal. You are marrying according to the biblical standard. You are marrying according, whether you are a Buddha, you don't say, ah, now I have seen a, a new sister in the church. I think I will marry this one. No, that's a spirit of lust, which is now is being permitted by most, by most servants of God. So divorce, polygamy are inventions of men, but it did not alter the doctrine of marriage as defined by the Lord Jesus Christ. It's, this one is not a progressive revelation. It's something that was there. It was totally revealed in the Garden of, in the garden of Eden. That's how, that's how God wanted it. Like I said, Adam was put to sleep in the rib. And when you walk up, this is the bone of my bones, which Apostle Paul said, uh, wrote in Ephesians chapter 5, 31, when he said, This I talk about the mystery of the church. That's where it came about. So, as the human population now increased, God did increase the government of marriage. So, people begin to multiply. So, the first marriage question that arises out of scripture is who did Cain marry? Remember, hmm. who did Cain marry? Who did uh, this one marry? That's what some will say, Pastor. Wait, 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 wait. Can you tell me who did Cain marry? Then I ask, say, who did Seth marry? Say, who is Seth? You don't even know who Seth is. If you talk about Cain, then you must know Seth. That was the replacement of, uh, of Abel. Yeah, Seth, he said, yes, that was the father of Enoch. Said what? Said yes, you must know these things. If you read your Bible very well, let us go before you start to answer. So at times we are, we want to answer people according to they want to test your knowledge of Christianity, but we don't use our knowledge to please the vulgar. So you know the only command that Cain was given, he said you has put a mark, a vagabond. You are going to be a vagabond moving from here and there, just roaming the earth. So Cain's marriage to Eve was forbidden. He could not marry his own mother. He could not marry his own, own, um, own mother. Because then, remember there were three. In the beginning, there were four. It was Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel. There were four. Now that there are three, what happened? Then Adam had two other daughters. So Adam all in all had five children. But the Bible always usually counts the male child. Even if you had 10 daughters, four, four boys and 10 daughters, they will say you had four sons. That is what was because they said they will go and get married. So they never counted them as part of the our family. So the only command that Cain was obligated to follow regarding marriage was that he leave his mother and father. Cain was expelled from his family when God said, a fugitive, vagabond, get out. God did not, did not disappoint. So Cain's, like I said, his marriage to Eve, to, to your mother, would be forbidden. But because there were only two people. But his marriage to the daughter of Adam was not forbidden because now he was more like a, a stranger. So incest was limited to a marriage. It was limited in marriage between mother and son, father, father and daughter because there were very few people that way. Otherwise, there was no way people could multiply. So all the days of Adam, after he had begotten Seth, were 800 years, and he begat sons and daughters as Genesis chapter five tells us. So we are still talking about this marriage because we want to see where polygamy came from because God made it a monogamy. That was what God, God made it one man, one woman. So I had a discussion with one man. He said, oh, it is, it is permitted. Most, how many wives did Moses have? Says I say one. How many wives did Father Abraham had? He said, yeah, he had with a concubine, maybe three, four or so. He said, okay, so what about me? There is a difference. I said, 
Adam, who God spoke to one on one like this, he was given one man. So do you tell me that you hear God more than Adam? They said, no, I'm just trying to say this. So I want to show you where polygamy came from now. I want to show us where polygamy came. In the seventh generation of, in the Bible now, I call the first act of polygamy. Is it true? Genesis chapter four, verse 19. Like I said, everything is going to be done by scriptures. I will prove through scriptures what we are talking about here. Genesis chapter four, verse 19, I read in Jesus' name. It says, and Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. So we see now, that is the first act of recorded of polygamy in the Bible. This is the very first act before Moses was there. Moses was not yet, he was not, Moses he just wrote in retrospect, in retrospect when he saw, because he was writing as he was seeing, as he was permitted to see. So we see the first act now of polygamy. He took two wives. So it, it looks like a simple matter, taking two women in marriage. But when you look a closer, take a closer look now, you will see some important elements here. Polygamy is not a simple matter. This was a new doctrine regarding marriage now. So it was a sinful invention of an evil man. That's what the man said, no, I will need another one. God said, I will, for that matter, a man shall leave his wife and cling. The Bible is very clear. But man came and changed, he said, no. That's when the devil came and ministered. He said, no, we, woman is not, it's not bad. It's so you need two or three. Look at the man who, who will talk about it. Let me proceed in an orderly fashion so that we cannot miss it. So like I said, polygamy was an invention of man. It is, it is no blessing of God. God. Remember, God recognizes the wife of your youth. So the statement of Lamech is polygamy now is introduced abruptly as the matter of Adam or as the matter of Cain. So here we are seeing something now. This biblical people now, like Adam, Adama, 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 Adama just means Cain from the ground. That's what it means. That man was taken from the ground, Adama. If just have it means the law, life giver, a life giver, basically. So Lamech turned marriage into the last of the eye and the last of the flesh. He saw a woman and said, oh, let me have two now. Two, ah, this woman is good. He went and took another woman. So the names of, Lam of women's are the Lamech's wives now are indicating of, they're indicative of sensual transaction now. Like they, were, they looked sexy from outside. That's what it means sensual. They look sexy, they were adorned. You know, they will come like models. You said, oh, mm -hmm, I see. So this adornment now reminds us of Jezebel. Jezebel was attempting to circumvent the judgment of God by painting a face. She had to sit up there and say, let me paint. You will not see me. Hmm. See wickedness. It's one sin to the next. That's how man is. So we can see the biblical characters. It makes, it's like um, the, the, more she, the more she disguised, that, made, that is what made the, the Lord to the dogs. It made, it made it more appetizing for the dogs to eat. So this putting this uh, powder or so, it was a trait of prostitutes, treat prostitutes. So this is what Isaiah, prophet Isaiah was talking in Isaiah chapter three, verse 16 and 17. He said, moreover said the Lord, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, they walk with their stretched neck like this. You know, like the models. When you see, um, I, I've noticed usually it's an emirate. When you're sitting at the airport like this, when they come, they just go like this. When they come for the second time now before they open the gates for people to start, putting in, they will come and say, oh, like they are stepping on air. I said, okay. 
So this is what brought in about this thing that with the eye, man say, oh, it's good. So we are going. I don't think we'll be able to finish everything today because it's, I wanted to entertain lessons later, so, but I wanted to give you as much meat as you should have so that when you get everything, when you understand it, probably your questions will be answered along the way. It's very important. So the uncommon record that a daughter was born to Zilla is mentioned. There was a record which was not, something which was not recorded. There are some extra biblical sources where from theological um, background where I know other things that may not be readily available in the background. So this woman is thought that she was a beauty queen. Her name does not mean graceful in the name of the sense, you know, it just, it just, it suggests that Lamech was the last woman. It is last that drove him, say, ah, let me just get another woman. No. So we can see here the leadership role of this, um, of this generation, this rebellion against God. Where at the way Lamech, remember Lamech is the direct descendant of, of, um, of Cain. Let me read you the, 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 how to, the genealogy. Let us go to the Bible and read the genealogy so that we know those that do not know. The genealogy, I think Genesis 5. Yeah. Let's set for Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5 from verse, let's start from verse 6. That's what there are two Lamech, there are two Enoch, there are two this. So there's duplicate, the devil always is a counterfeit. So I want you to see something. Genesis chapter 5 from verse 5. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Man is that born of a woman yet by the short time to live, she will die. So Seth lived 105 years and beget Enos. And Seth lived, and, uh, sorry, he, be, he, he and beget uh, Enos 807 years and he beget sons and daughters. All the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. And Enos lived 90 years and beget Kainan. And Enos lived after he beget Kainan 800 years. And all the days of Enos were 905 years. And Kainan lived 70 years and beget, now he's beginning to Mahalalel. And Kainan lived after he beget Mahalalel 840 years and beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Kainan when 910 years and he died. Mahalalel lived 65 years and got Jared. And Jared and Mahalalel lived after he beget Jared 808 years, he beget sons and daughters. And all, all the days of Mahalalel were 895 years, 895 years. And Jared lived 162 years and he beget Enoch. And Jared lived 100, uh, Enoch, sorry. And Jared lived after beget Enoch 800 years and he beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Jared were 962 years. And Enoch lived 360 years, the one that walked with God. And Enoch walked with God and he was no more. And here it says, um, Enoch and um, Adam were compatriots. Enoch, uh, when Enoch was taken, I think Adam was about 650 years. I'll do the calculations. I did the calculations before when I did this. I did um, a previous teaching about it. And the Methuselah, Methuselah lived 897 years and beget Lamech. And Methuselah lived and beget Lamech 780 years and beget sons and daughters. 
And Lamech lived 892 and comes to Noah. And when you see from the Cain, from Cain, it also goes in the same, um, the other descendant is from Cain. So we've got the Cain and the Setite. The Cain, Cain is the bloodline of the devil, the Kainat, and then the Setite is from Seth. This is the two systems where now the good and evil, where we see how it permitted to, it was allowed to just go like that. So the, we are seeing here the first rebellion of man taking a wife because um, of lust, lust of the flesh. So it is suggested that this woman was central. So he is saying this man, he is saying a song in the presence of his wives. There's a song that he's saying, which suggested that um, it, was, it was something central. So there is a moral tone to a society, one which was recorded in Genesis chapter six in the days preceding the flood. It was evident that Lamech's fears were justified, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took wives of all those whom they trust. Now, this is where most people, meet, um, they put it differently. These were not children of men as men, men and men. Yes, women were beautiful men, but these were the angels, the fallen angels that escaped. They left their first estate and chose to come in the habit, habitat with men. How did they do it? But remember, angels could come. Remember when um, Father Abraham, when the Lord wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he came and ate. It was in physical form, in the form of a man. So we could assume that they took bodily forms and came. So this is what happened. They left, the, and these angels, they did something abominable in the eyes of the Lord. These angels are down there, they're in hell in chains. These are the angels that are going to be released to torture the people during the tribulation. They are angry, all those thousands of years, they are waiting. Once they come out, there will be more wickedness, wickedness that man has never seen. Wickedness that can only be better imagined. This is the time when we are coming. So these were angels, pure angels, not the sons of men, no. Because when they say the sons, the, because the angels were also referred to the sons of God. In many Bible, Bible transactions, it's time, at times they will say the sons of God. So Apostle Peter made it very clear when he was talking about it. But say, if he did not spare even the angels that left their first estate, so we know that his angels, so some people attempted to believe something. So the first polygamist was a killer. Scripture records his confession. Hear my voice, you wives of Lamech, and hearken to my, to my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounding, a young man to my head. So this is the man who has now, um, he, he made a confession actually, that he killed a man. He killed a man and it is believed that he wounded his grandfather. So Lamech was so jubilant and excited about his deed that he, you know, he, he was so proud of it. He was so proud of it. So we know that he did, he did actually kill. Is it true that this man killed? Let's read in the Bible. I will not take it from extra soul, um, biblical sources. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4, verse 23 to 24. Auntie Jovita, I can read for me. Um, 23, Genesis chapter 4. Yeah, 23 and 24. Okay, read in Jesus' name, amen. Allah makes... And Lamech said, and Lamech said unto his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice, ye wives of Lamech, 
Hearken unto my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding, and a young man to my hurt. 24. If Ken shall be avenged sevenfold, truly, Lamech, Lamech, seventy and sevenfold. Amen. Amen. So we see another matter again. You see how wicked it was. We see in Genesis 6, 7, man say, God saying, I have put up to here with man. I will never, my spirit will never be happy with man again. So the survival of human race was essential to both the generation of Adam and Noah. And this depended on the huge population. The larger the tribe, the larger the nation. So like, you know, the Chinese are more, the Koreans are more, we are less. So the more the people, it always gives you a more ability to build a powerful society. So the sons of Lamek were very powerful. The record tells us that they were tent makers, headsmen, inventors of musical instruments. They made also metal weapons. So the number of sons a man had was powerful. So this is what men had to come in now. So was it possible that Lamek was cheating on the numbers by committing bigamy? Polygamy is nothing more than the sin of bigamy, where you've got more than one. Realizing that more than one wife gave him the potential to have many sons, he must have imagined and discovered, he rediscovered the doctrine of marriage now that will make him the savior of the world. Polygamy, it's a satanic deception. If I've got 10 boys, if you want to dare me, oh, when I call them, they'll come in illnessless with me. Just imagine, or oh, come 10 like this. Then no, I was just trying to play with your father. So it was a form of a power. So he probably, so that was the deception because the devil was still ministering. So the Bible now, it documented the lives of men who resist the knowledge of God. Lamech reminds one of the people is like the antichrist of the last day. He opposed and he exalted himself above all that is called God. And that, is, that was worshipped. Is it true? Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. Until the Vita can read for me again. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. The second Thessalonians chapter okay. 2, verse 4. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 says, Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Amen. Amen. So, the Canaanites, now the people descended directly from Cain were called Canaanites. They were they are in godly sensual race. So that's polygamy satisfied their last now and need for power. It could also satisfy man's need for at least one son. It could also satisfy man for, like the Bible said, Adam knew his wife and she bore him a son, called him Seth, for God has called him for God, um, for he had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, because this one was just away already. And to say it, to him also was a sign, and he called him Enoch. Then began to call upon the name of the Lord. So we can see that uh, the next major event from the thesis of the birth in the Bible now was the God, the seed of Seth, who called upon the name of the Lord. So that's why the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord um, Apostle Paul writing in Romans chapter 9, 9, 15, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, which was also repeated in Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Whosoever shall, it shall be so in those days that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this is the state now as a spiritual rest who found salvation by faith. Because the state, they just believed. So salvation is clearly visible in, in one of the, well, when you compare the two, 
the fact that he walked with God is mentioned twice. Perhaps for the reason that he walked with God for 300 years. 300 years. Now we are living 40, 50 years. We cannot honor God. Just imagine. One week. Hmm. What a pity. What excuse when this man rises. You know, for the first 10 years that he was in heaven, when you see a cloud like this, you run to close these windows. Okay, you know, it took him time to adjust earthly and living life. So this man lived with God and, you know, it was quite, um, it was quite a time because he asked Adam, hey, grandpa, can you tell me, how was it? He said, oh, it was nice, my son. The Lord will come in the in the in the cool of the night or in the cool of the day. We will just talk. Oh, it was sweet. It was so peaceful. So it's sixty-five. It's something just was just that desire that if you seek Him, if you desire Him, you will find Him. He started walk with God three hundred years. He didn't test that. That was the first rapture in the Bible. That is the first recorded rapture in the Bible. So man's battle between good and uh, if uh, between good and evil often takes in the it, come, it, also, it also often comes in the form of war. We've seen world wars, civil wars. So the righteous nation of Seth was at war with his brother, the tribe of Cain. The weapons of Cain were lust, sensuality, polygamy, and the power. So what do what will they do now? I will not get into this kind of teaching today. These are the men, remember, um, in the numbers 20 from 22, 23, 24, 25, where Baal, Balim, well, wanted to curse Baal, wanted to curse the children of Israel, said, you cannot curse what God is blessed. So he said, do you know what? Just send your daughters to go and fetch firewood from them. When they are looking for bread, tell them to go there. When they are looking for their juice cards, let them be put in one ministry. That's how they felt. They used all seduction techniques to bring them down. That is why sin came in. That was revealed by the Lord in Revelation chapter 2, 14, the doctrine of Balaam. It was hidden all through the Bible until the Lord, when he visited the churches, when he was visiting the churches and telling them their state of the church. So these were the weapons that this, but Seth now was equipped with faith in God. Creation, marriage, peace, love. We see these ones now. Now they're saying man and man. This is the same tribal. This is the same kind of, it's the same tribe, man and man, woman and woman. Can they make children? No. Why are they say God made it like this? I don't know which God. I don't know which God they will be talking about. It's certainly not our Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord Jesus Christ now was very successful in the defense of the dark, darkness of evil. It could not overcome him. And it was not so with Seth. So you, you put the victory now. That's why he, he gave us the victory. If believed, this when she announced for God that appointed me another seat instead of Abraham. That's when he knew another seed was given. Because of our time, I want to see where I can stop. I wanted to, to go in, to start explaining a little bit deeper now, a little bit deeper, where the battle of the ages began that day in Genesis chapter three, verse 15. Say, so I'll put an enmity between your seed and this one now. That is where it comes in. Everything that we are seeing now in marriage, I wanted to show you Marriage, the creation of marriage, divorce, and polygamy. How the three of them are married together. The three of them, there is not, oh, especially polygamy, remarriage, and divorce. These are three, and there is another divorce. A divorce in, a live in divorce. Where people are living as couples when they are divorced. There's no formal pronouncement. All this thing is fraud, which is coming from the Canaanites. It's coming directly from Cain, directly from Cain. Because we said, said, 
lived by faith. It's a teaching that we're going to invite people who have got questions to come in because I want to show how, what is the mind of God? Because we're going to start from Genesis. That's where the first marriage was ordained of God. So we want to see how did, where did the wheels come out? How did man decide now say, oh, now I can have two. God told Adam, I'm giving you one. He did not give them two. So where did this concept of two come from now? So if the devil succeeds in corrupting marriage now, he would have prevented the God's seed. That's why he comes in the mix. Because you know, marriage is the vehicle through which God was going, which God is going to deliver godly children into the world. So the serpent was always against marriage, creation marriage. It, he wanted to use it as a vehicle of destruction, as a vehicle of destruction. So that's why he at his attempt to corrupt marriage, he influenced Lamech to take another woman. We saw it also trying to happen where Abimelech is in Genesis 9:19, where Father Abraham said there, when he was, why did you not tell me that this woman is your wife? It is truly, Mother Sarah was truly a sister, a sister of this man. It was true, but yes, she was a wife. So when you see in the next chapter, that's when Isaac was born. So heaven had to intervene. Otherwise, the bloodline could have been tainted. That she was not, that's why he was not allowed to touch him. That's why I said, go, go, go away. Oh, rather than last now. So this is where this corruption came in now. So if Satan can succeed in corrupting marriage, he would have presented the God's seed, the Messiah, his destroyer. Because the seed of a woman was going to destroy the bruise he had. This is the first indication of the Lord Jesus Christ, not from Genesis 1 3, he can jump to 3 15 or 1 26. So rather than last after another woman, the married man who just married the woman of his last. So he tries now. So the corruption was to, be, to permit adultery and last to become to be called marriage now. So this is where pollution has come in. Now, instead of the second wife, so no, it's my wife. You cannot call her a prostitute now. No, she's my wife. It's not a wife, it's after last. That's what she is. That's why the Bible says adulteress. That's who she is. Because she's coming and trying to take another. So the devil was very successful in his attempts to corrupt this seed. Hell and destruction are never full. So are the eyes of men shall never fall. Proverbs chapter 27, 20. When man see the, 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 the English, they say, what the eyes do not see, the mouth does not water for. So that's why this kind of dressing is being encouraged now in the name of human rights to take men. This is one disease that has made even pastors to fall. So immediately before the flood now, the devil almost succeeded again to corrupt marriage. That's why God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For these giants now, they have taken the sons, the daughters of men. He had come in again. So the devil is always at work. He had come in and did this. He is, he was always working. So some people used to say, the, 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 they say the angels neither made nor this, but these were angels that left their first estate. So the breaking down was a marriage breakdown, an attempt to corrupt with the generation. So this is this was the first very the very first war, the yeah, let's call it war between the two civil, civil, um, civilizations. Setite and Kenite. So the set, the set descendants were in possession of the place. The Kenan, the Kenites now were built of destruction. The weapon which was last. Last, last. Would you like to drive my car? Lamborghini. Who will say no to a Lamborghini? I will not drive it in a, in a lifetime. Why not? Oh, see this one, yeah. 
You see this woman thing, you think she does not go and take a shower. She goes into a dry clean. Say, look at my daughter, I can take it. Huh? Just imagine. This is how this, that is their weapon, the greatest weapon. This weapon is still being used today. So the weapon of the righteous was preaching the word now like what we are doing. So Noah, that's why the Bible says he was a righteous preacher. Lamech, a Canaanite, was a killer and a polygamist. You remember he was boasting in Genesis 4, 23-24. He said, yeah, I have killed. Telling, bragging before his, his wives. So the battle seems to be even until men begin to multiply on the face of the earth. That is why they started more polygamy, more polygamy. So it was a doctrine of last marriage and polygamy. In the absence of birth control, then, you know, people were just giving birth as many times. As well. So this is one thing that brought in this a women, probably. I cannot say with authority that is the reason why, but we know the combination could have produced an imbalance in favor of the Kenites. Plentiful number of daughters. These daughters were fair in their sex. They were like sexy. That's how they... And the men were last for they were appeal like bodybuilders, just like this. So it's like they will become a dream of every woman. If it's a woman, become a dream of every man. So in this last marriage doctrine now was the basis of this society. The final, the, 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 this, is, this is where Lamech now doctrine succeeded. The Kenneth increased in unusual numbers, filling the earth. Their daughters held unusual phys uh, physical appeal. You know, they looked good, like the Beyonce's them say, oh, you see a dazzling beauty. Say, oh, this woman is beautiful. These are the kind of people that you see. So you will not, you, you cannot, it cannot escape your attention. So I will end here today so that next week, before I continue, I will take all questions containing polygamy, Remarriage, we can talk even about it. Whatever questions have got pertaining to marriage, then we'll go and proceed from there. So I'll give back to the moderator because of our time. Unless if you say you've got time, we can proceed tomorrow. I'm ready. Praise the Lord. I don't know who is moderating. <laughs>